Tonight we're in a four-part series. This is the final of the four parts of hearing God's voice. Pastor Jeff spoke last Sunday about hearing God's voice through his written word, through the, the Bible. And then Pastor Zach followed up that evening, a week ago tonight, um, on ways that God speaks to us. This morning, if you were here, you heard Pastor Austin speak about hindrances to hearing God's voice. And I want to encourage you, if you missed any one of them, go back and listen. And if you were there and you need to be reminded of them, go back and listen again. Um, so tonight I want to share some practical ways and some personal examples of knowing God's plan. So tonight necessarily isn't um, preaching, but more of a teaching and just sharing some practical thoughts uh, from me. So if you and I were out at a restaurant eating dinner or at a coffee shop just sharing coffee, um, not the same cup, but just having coffee at the same time, um, just these are some things that I would share with you. I would share with my family members, with, with people that ask, you know, what is God's will uh, for my life? You know, how do I know what God's will is and all that kind of stuff? And so, so, so tonight, um, I, I believe all four of these messages have kind of like tied in together, and so there will be some things that maybe you, you've heard and just reiterated differently tonight, and so these thoughts line up with previous messages, but um, there's an old Scottish woman who went from home to home across the countryside. She was selling thread and buttons and shoestrings, and when she came to an unmarked crossroad, she would take a stick, she would throw it up in the air, and whatever direction the stick pointed, that's the direction she would go. And so one day, however, she was seen tossing this stick up several times. So someone says, why do you toss a stick more than once? Well, because it keeps pointing to the left and I want to go to the right. So she kept throwing the stick into the air until it finally pointed the way she wanted to go and then she went to the right. So talk about being stubborn. But for, for years, we have all been wondering the big questions of life. God, what is it you want me to do? What are you leading me to do? What, who am I supposed to marry? Where am I supposed to move to? All this kind of stuff. Um, and since that time, we, you know, mankind has resorted to a lot of interesting ways of trying to figure out the future. Um, maybe going to a psychic, maybe um, reading the horoscope, throwing up a stick in the air. But I want, let's be honest, there is only one tried and true way of knowing what the future is. Right? You know what the answer is? What's the answer? No, it's not. Sorry to tell you, but this is the one tried and true way. <laughs> this is a, a lucky eight ball, all right? So um, I have a few questions that this is going to tell us. And so we really don't, after this, if you just need to know what the future holds, just come up and get this and we'll be done. So anyways, uh, will the Chicago Cubs ever win another World Series in my lifetime, and it says, concentrate and ask again. <laughs> okay? Um, should I eat hot wings tonight after church? Most likely. All right. My kids are excited about that one. Uh, what about this one? Will Pastor Weaver's hair ever grow back? Cannot predict, predict that right now. Okay? Uh, finally, this is my, from my friend Adam. Should I go into work tomorrow? As I see it, yes. Ah. So I guess I'm going to be at staff meeting tomorrow morning. But anyways, um, we, we've all tried. Obviously, I'm kidding, of course. But um, we've all tried um, lots of different ways, you know, or thought of different ways of like, okay, what does the future hold? Um, and sometimes we want the entire road map. Right? When you were younger, especially, when you were younger, you wanted to know everything, didn't we? We wanted to know where we're going to college, what our profession's going to be. It starts out when we're little, and by the time we're 15, we want to know all that kind of stuff. And the truth of the matter is that we don't really need to know it all in one shot, do we? In fact, if we did, we might get scared and not trust God through it all. And so, our, our, unfortunately, our world is in this information age where you can find out pretty much anything real quick you know, by opening up your phone and, and, and searching it or on your computer, whatever it may be. Um, but that's not necessarily how God always works. And I think we understand that by now tonight. Um, but God, God knows what we need to know and when we need to know it. And our job is to be able to trust him and to, to follow in obedience to him. So 
Um, if we live each day, simply live each day with God, he's going to lead us into all truth, isn't he? And so the future, what the future holds isn't necessarily about what is happening 10 years from now. That is part of it, but, but it also contains to today. So, you know, I think Pastor Austin referred to it today. Sometimes we're so focused on what, what's going to happen, you know, way down the road when we fail to realize, hey, there's, there's a plan and a purpose for today that God has for me, and we need to be in step with what he has today. So knowing God's plan for our life, it doesn't have to be complicated. It's not, not something that he's hiding from us, that he's uh, trying to just lure in front of us until we keep chasing it down. We don't need a, a lucky eight ball, or we don't need to resort to throwing up a stick, or look for writing on the wall, all that kind of stuff. But it really is about a couple practical things, and I'll share with those with you in just a moment. Um, Psalm 143, verse 10. You can turn there if you'd like. Uh, this is just a, a, a great verse that David prayed. And he says this in 143, verse 10 of Psalm. He says, Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. And that was the prayer of David, and that was his heartbeat. Is, is God, would you teach me to do your will? And in that kind of just sets the stage for us even today is that we, we need to be in a spot with our relationship with Christ where we're like, God, I, I, teach me to do your will. I, I want to do what you are asking me to do um, and, and doing that. So by living close to him, by obeying Christ, we're going to learn to recognize his voice, okay? So this is kind of a common thing that, th- theme that we've been sharing over the last three sermons is, is recognizing God's voice. And, and by living close to God, by obeying him, we're going to recognize what his voice is. And so tonight, the goal is not to figure out the will for you and for your life. The goal isn't to have all of your questions answered about the big decisions that you're facing. Can that happen? Absolutely. I believe God can speak to you at any moment about that. But tonight is more about the process of hearing God's voice so that you can follow his plan. And so I have two simple thoughts tonight, and then I want to share a couple practical things and a couple personal examples. But in order to to know God's plan, number one, we need to be in proximity of him. So proximity. When you're in proximity of someone, you're, you're close enough to see them. You're close enough to hear them to follow them. You're close enough to know where they are. Um, That's proximity. And when you're in proximity to Jesus, you're close enough to hear him when he speaks, when he whispers to you, um, and and to follow the leading of his Holy Spirit. James 4, 8 says this, come near to God and he will come near to you. Come near to God and he's going to come near to you. So when we're in proximity to him, um, we, we are, we're in a close fellowship, a close relationship to him. Just like Pastor Austin shared this morning, um, hindrances, roadblocks, obstacles uh, from hearing God's voice, um, sin. Sin is a, a, is a major thing. And when we're in proximity with, with Christ, we are intentionally positioning our hearts and our life to line up with Jesus. And so that means that we have to deal with difficult things. We have to deal with sin. We have to deal with the things that don't line up with God's word. And, but we're intentionally doing it. Why? Because we want our life to reflect Jesus, right? We want our hearts to reflect him and his heart. We want our hearts to be like what David prayed, teach me to do your will, for you're my God. We're, we're lining ourselves up with that. See, God didn't create us so that we would know about him, right? If God created us just so that we would know about him, he may not have sent us on Jesus because there's a lot of information. But God created us so that we would know him and be in in close relationship with him. And there's a big difference between the two. So the Willis Tower in Chicago, it's this massive building. And uh, this summer I was trying to describe it to my kids. It is the 12th tallest building in the world. It is 110 stories tall, which is 1,450 feet. The gross square feet of this building is 4.56 million, which is equivalent to 101 football fields. This building is 76,000 tons of steel. So the combined weight of this building, of the the Willis Tower, is over uh, 222,000 tons of steel. So the average sway of this building from true center, the average sway from left to right, six inches. All right, doesn't seem like much, but when you're on the 110th 
floor? I'm sure it seems like a lot. Um, there are over 16,000 tinted windows on this building. There's over 25,000 miles of electrical cable in this building. Over 25 miles of plumbing in the Willis Tower. There's over 80 miles of elevator cable, 145,000 light fixtures, 43,000 miles of telephone cable. And this building, at the time it was built, cost more than $175 million. It's a massive building. But instead of telling you about it, wouldn't you like to go there and see it? How many of you have been there? You've seen the Willis Tower, right? Has anybody gone to the top? Let me see the brave souls here. All right, there's a few. Well, uh, this, this summer, we took a quick trip to Chicago, our family and I, uh, obviously to catch the best team in baseball, the Cubs, <clears throat> to watch them play, all right? But while we're there, we also went to the Willis Tower. And so um, this first picture is from the, the ground up. Doesn't look like much. And at the top, way, way, way at the top, I don't have a laser pointer, but there's like four boxes that are like uh, pointing out. And if you're familiar with this, or maybe you've been there before, but they have, uh, it's like an observation deck. So this deck, it'll bump out uh, um, about the depth of this bump out here on the platform. And it's about eight feet wide, and there's four of those. And it's, cl it's like clear glass. And so you can, you can literally step out away from the building onto this glass, and then you could look down 110 stories. How many of you would ever do that? Yes? All right. Um, it's one thing to be here and say you'd do it, but once you get to that, uh, I remember the first time I did it. Um, I know I've, I'm watching people do it, and I know that they're being held up. But it's different when you got to do it and you just put your foot out there and I, like I just I'm inching out my, my feet at the same time. And so I, I'm not showing you now, but when I went up there, two of my kids went with me and uh, we just, I watched them and they just inched their feet out at the same time. Like, uh, I know this could probably hold an elephant, but man, I don't, I don't know. So uh, the next picture is, you know, what it's like when you're standing out there, you're looking down. 110 stories, and then the next picture is just myself and Kayla and Blake. It's a little blurry, but, uh, or Kayla and Ethan, I'm sorry. And so, um, kind of cool, but it's one of those things, if you've gone up there, your knees are shaking, right? Like, you know you're okay, at least for me, you know you're okay, um, but it was, it's one thing to read about the, the Willis Tower or to read stories and facts about it, but then when you go to it, you're in proximity of it, you, you experience it, it's a whole new thing, a whole new appreciation for, for that building. And, and likewise, after a while, hearing about God is, is only gets us so far. We need to be on, in proximity with our Lord and Savior, the one who created us, right? The, the, the person who paid the penalty for our sin, we need to be in a close relationship with him. And um, often in the scripture, our life is compared to this walk. A walk with Jesus, and how true that is. This is this is a journey that we're on. This isn't a sprint. It's not just the short jaunt. This is a is this is a journey that we we are on. And the great thing is is that we don't have to walk through this life alone. We have the one um, who has a plan for us, and we have the one that we can be in proximity with, um, and who is walking with us. Discovering God's will for your life is it starts with this part right here. It's just being in proximity, being in a close relationship with Jesus Christ. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. I want you to notice something. It says, For I know the plans that I have for you. Right? Who has the plans? God does. Right? He has the plans. And so in order to find out the big, bigger picture of our life, a lot of times it needs to start with this spot right here. We need to be in a close relationship with Christ. So not only do we need to live in proximity, but we also need to draw, in, draw near to God. But when he speaks, we need to obey. And so that's the second point is this, is obedience. As we live, listen, as we live in a close relationship with God, um, we begin to recognize his voice. 
And the longer that you've been in, in a relationship with Christ, that y- your faith has been entrusting with him, um, you begin to recognize when he's maybe leading you, when he's guiding you, whether it's decisions or things that you need to change in your life. And, um, and we begin to recognize that. And as he begins to speak to us, as God begins to stir our hearts, um, we need to be able to step out in faith. Right? There, at, at some point, we need to be able to step out in faith. Ultimately, we want God's will to be done, don't we? We want God's will to be done. And Jesus taught us in Matthew 6.10, when we pray, he says, pray that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Ultimately, that's, that's our heart's cry. Just like David says, teach me to do your will. And, our, and we want to pray, God, God, have your way in my life. Have your way on this earth, just like it is as it is in heaven. And so we pray that, and we want it to be done, but then when the rubber hits the road, when obedience comes into play, it's not always easy. How many of you would agree with that? Sometimes God may lead you in a direction that you're like, I'm not super comfortable with that. Um, and so it, it definitely takes a step of obedience. Obedience is the key. Jesus said this in John six thirty eight: For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. You know, Jesus didn't begin in a manger and you know as a baby jesus has existed and has been there from beginning with his father but jesus humbled himself became a servant became obedient to death um, for the payment of sin for mankind jesus didn't have his own agenda did he 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 says i didn't come to do my own thing here and to, this isn't my show here this is my father's show and i'm i'm accomplishing what my father wants his desire was to do his father's will and i encourage you to make that your prayer also just like david prayed teach me to do your will i, w- I want god's will to be accomplished in my life right and and guys this this reflects in decisions that we make you know so some some of us here are facing like bigger life decisions it, this impacts that. Some of us are p- facing maybe smaller life decisions. This impacts it. We want God's will ultimately to be done. And as we live in proximity, he's begin- going to begin to speak and lead us and guide us. Galatians 5.25 says, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. The Spirit is moving. The Spirit is active. And we need to keep in step with what the Holy Spirit is doing. Let me give you an example. Last Saturday, I was out to eat with my family after the state cross-country uh, meet and, um, for middle school. And we were eating. And I, I dropped my family off. And so I was the only one that knew where the car was in the parking lot. Sometimes that's a fun little thing to have, right? Uh, you guys can't go anywhere because I'm the only one that knows, knows where the car is. But anyways, so um, I was the only one that knew where the car was. So I walk intentionally, slowly outside of the building. I think I whispered to my daughter saying, hey, let's wait back here and let's just see if anybody, you know, how far people go until they realize, yeah, I, I don't know where I'm going. Um, and so I did this all in fun, but um, it didn't take long for um, everybody else to all of a sudden just step barely outside and start walking to realize, yeah, we have no idea where we're going, okay? <laughs> so I uh, did that all in fun. But then, then I sense, like, that's kind of, you know, where our relationship with Christ needs to be. We need to keep in step with the Spirit. As the Spirit is moving, we need to be able to, to, to recognize and to follow. And so then, obviously, as a family, we got closer together. We, didn't, we weren't just spread out doing what we want. We got close together, and, and then they began to follow and, and know where I was, was going. Um, so listen to this. I, I um, felt strongly to share this with you. We don't need to run ahead of the Holy Spirit out of mistrust and impatience. We don't need to lag behind out of fear and worry. We need to keep in step with the Holy Spirit out of trust, confidence, and obedience. I'm going to say that again. We don't need to run ahead of the Holy Spirit out of mistrust and impatience. We don't need to lag behind out of fear and worry. We need to keep in step with the Holy Spirit out of trust, confidence, and obedience. So as we live in proximity in our relationship with Christ, he's going to begin to stir our hearts. He's going to begin to open up opportunities for us. He's going to present um, opportunities for us, and, and we need to be able to recognize what God's Spirit is, and unfortunately, w- w- what His voice is, and unfortunately, the Bible doesn't tell us specifically um, 
everything that we were supposed to do, right? Did it say you need to attend this college, you need to uh, specifically marry this person, you, you need to move to this city and take this job. It doesn't spell it out word for word in God's word, but there are principles and there's wisdom that is applied here that helps us. So as we recognize it, so there, there's uh, some practical things that I want to share with you um, of hearing God's plan f- for your life, of, of some practical things that you can do to not only hear God's voice, but to understand maybe this is God's uh, uh, God's voice, and, and how do we understand that? How do we step out in faith and trust that? So first of all is this, a practical way of hearing God's plan for your life. Living a life of prayer, of reading the Word, and Christian fellowship. Listen, this, this is the nuts and bolts. This is where it starts. We need to live a life of prayer. We need to live a life of reading God's Word and Christian fellowship. What we're doing tonight, Christian fellowship, is powerful. It's good. There's a lot of, there's wisdom here. There's people who have, who have lived a lot more life than I have, and they have more wisdom than I do. And so I want to I glean from, from their life experiences. Uh, for big decisions, the second thing is this. For, for bigger decisions— um, like maybe you're moving or changing a job or marriage or college, seek advice from godly mentors. All right, some of you are thinking this is, this is stuff that is very practical, you know this, but this is, at some point we all need to understand this. We need to seek advice from godly mentors, someone who's older than us, someone who is wiser, has uh, a deep faith, a, a parent, grandparents, a spouse, a sibling, um, a pastor, we need to seek advice from a godly mentor, someone that we can trust, and that isn't just going to tell us what we want to hear, but is going to tell us, you know, maybe what we need to hear. Um, another way, to, a practical thing, is to ask God to confirm what you sense that He's leading you to do. Ask God to confirm what you sense He's leading you to do. All right. Sometimes we're like, man, I I feel like this is what I'm supposed to do. And I don't want to put the stamp of approval saying God said because I could be way off. So God, would you please confirm this? Like, how do I know this is God speaking? So ask God to confirm it. How many of you have ever had a moment in life or a, a situation where you God confirmed a decision you needed to make? Right? Hands are up. There's a time uh, in like 98 or 99, I had an opportunity to go to South Africa on a missions trip. And uh, I really wanted to go because I think it, it would, would have been a really neat experience, you know, going out of the country to South Africa and doing some missions work, all that kind of stuff. But the price tag was pretty high, you know. I mean, anytime you travel out of the country, it's going to cost a lot of money. And so I had this opportunity. I really wanted to go, and I was thinking I needed to go, but I wasn't 100% sure. And so um, I was at a point where the deadline to make a decision was coming, right? And it's like, I don't have a clear direction, and I'm not sure. Um, and so I was in this sanctuary in the church at that time of Rockford First Assembly, and at that time it seated 5,000 people, so it was quite large if you've ever been there before. I was praying in one of the aisles, and I was praying specifically about this, like, God, am I supposed to go to South Africa? Please make this clear, like, confirm it somehow, all this kind of stuff, and um, uh, off the side of the, the platform came a gentleman, just like one of these doors here. And now, this is a massive auditorium or a massive sanctuary, so there's several aisles just like this in several sections. And I'm in like one of these right over here. I'm praying, and there's hardly anybody else in there at the time. Um, and so this gentleman walks, uh, you know, off this way, and he comes down the steps, and he comes down my aisle, all right, as I'm praying. And I was a little annoyed. I'm like, of all the aisles— right? There's 17 more. You could have gone on this one. Why mine? And that's what I'm thinking, but, you know, um, I didn't take time to really talk to him or, or anything like that. I uh, just smiled and kept praying. But as I'm praying, this, this gentleman walks by me, and all he does is he points up to the back of the sanctuary, and he says, oh, look, there's South Africa's flag, and keeps going. And I had no idea what the flag at the time looked like, but I looked around in my aisle and straight ahead of me is South Africa's flag. And so this whole time I'm praying, God, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? And I didn't even know at the time that guy is a missionary to South Africa. And so um, needless to say, I went on the trip, right? (laughs) You know, I knew that that I needed to go. But um, God can confirm to us in so many ways. And so that, does that happen every time? Not necessarily, but God can confirm it, and God does confirm on those types of things. So don't be afraid to ask God to confirm what you're sensing 
um, you're supposed to do. And you step out in faith. Um, speaking of stepping out in faith, this is another practical thing. You do need to step out in faith and trust in God. All right, not all the time is, are, is something going to be confirmed and that it's just an automatic wide open door and you're like, okay, this is, I know exactly this is what I'm supposed to do. At times you sense, okay, um, I'm sensing this is what I'm supposed to do and so I'm going to take a step of faith. From that point on, after like recognizing maybe this is God's voice of going to South Africa and then it was confirmed, now moving forward, I recognize that a little bit more. Does that make sense? Now on other decisions, when you sense that again, you're more apt to possibly step out because last time that was like this. I know Pastor Austin referred to a little bit today. The last time I sensed this, this was God leading me and I took a step of faith and it happened. And the more you do it, the more you're in proximity, the more you're taking steps of obedience, uh, the more it's just going to, you're going to be in tune and you're going to be uh, keeping in step with the Holy Spirit. Uh, so you, you do need to step out in faith, but I want to caution you, just because an opportunity is there doesn't mean you have to take it, right? Uh, you can't operate your life by just taking every whim of opportunity that blows in front of you and just say, well, this must be God because it's presented to me. No, you, the, the other side of the coin is this. The other practical thing is this, is that you need to apply wisdom. The Bible says in James 1, 5, that if you lack wisdom, you what? You ask God for it. So ask God, like, God, I, I sense I'm supposed to do this, and, and so please give me the wisdom to know how to do it. And this wisdom happens also when you ask a godly mentor, when you ask a spouse, when you ask someone else, like, hey, um, what's the wisdom here? Like, I need to be, to be smart about this. Um, but I, I do want to caution you, our wisdom sometimes, if it's not God's wisdom, our wisdom holds us back, like, from in fear. Like, I'm worried. That's a big step of faith. I'm not sure what to do. So a couple of, of personal examples for me. And then we'll close in prayer. Um, back in 2001, I had just, I was finishing up my internship here at New Hope. And um, I had a list of approximately five or six places of ministry opportunities. A couple like ministry outreaches, a couple churches. And, and so I had my list. And uh, Spencer, Iowa was at the bottom of my list. And um, I intentionally put it at the bottom. <laughs> and... I, you know, I had places to interview, and I even traveled and interviewed at a church in Detroit, Michigan, to a place in Nebraska. I was on the phone with a place in Louisiana. You know, I was just trying everything. And uh, this whole time, Spencer, Iowa remains at the bottom. And, the, and little by little, uh, my list begins to get smaller and smaller. And um, so all that remained was... Spencer, yes. So I finally called them, and I met the pastor when he was in town uh, visiting for district council. Um, I, I set up an actual just, just conversation with them and then went up for a weekend visit to the church and, and visited the church. And man, the whole time I'm thinking, I do not want to move here. I'm telling you, this is my as true as, as I'm telling you, I did not want to go there. Uh, but this entire time, I was sensing I was supposed to. Anybody ever had moments like that? Like, I don't want to do this, but I'm sensing I'm supposed to do it. And um, I'm telling you, I whittled off every opportunity, possible thing of ministry until I got to this place. So I go up there, I interview, and um, they, they call me like a couple of days later and said, we'd like to offer you the position as youth pastor at our church. And um, I said, okay, well, let me, let me pray about it. And then I'll call you, I think I said, in maybe a week or so. And I'm telling you, I was praying, God, if there's any other place. <laughs> like if there's any other opportunity for me, uh, that just the, you, we have a few days. You got to let me know in a few days. And I knew in the back of my mind, in my spirit, I knew there wasn't going to be, but I'm like, I'm holding out hope. And so I finally get to the point where I'm like, okay, I think this is where I'm supposed to be. So I call up the pastor and um, I, I wasn't too excited about it, but I said, yes, you know, I'll come up and I'll, and I'll be the youth pastor up at that church. Um, and and I just knew that it was the right thing. And how many of you have ever had a, a moment in your life you're like, I don't know, I just, I just sense in my spirit this is what I'm supposed to do. And, and, um, and it was one of those moments. And so it wasn't like a going to South Africa confirmation moment at all. This was a, a moment of like, I'm, I'm recognizing, I think this is God's spirit, God's voice, and I'm stepping out in faith. 
and uh, I'm taking a step of obedience because I, I sense I recognize what God is, is leading me to. So as we're packing up, I'm, I'm packing up at my parents' house um, to move up there. I vividly remember in the garage, uh, we were getting some boxes ready, and I vividly remember my mom with her back to me says, you never know, you might meet your future wife up there. And I, re- I internally roll my eyes thinking, yeah, right, you know, and boy, was I wrong. And so I'm so thankful that I moved up to Spencer. Uh, so I took that job out of a step of faith and obedience. And so I would have rather have been in God's will and been at peace than been where I wanted to be and been restless. Does that make sense? We want to be where God wants us to be, and we can be at peace, even if we're in our spirit. I'm this, God, I'm trusting you in this. Then be at the best, what we think is the best job, the best pay, the best city in America type of thing, and be restless because we know that this isn't where God wants us to be. And so this, this is a principle that we can apply to big decisions and small decisions. Another example is when uh, my family and I moved back here. Um, so it's the summer of 2003. We're living in Spencer. Our oldest son, Ethan, has just been born in June. And Pastor Weaver calls me in July and, and asks if, if I would consider coming down to um, work with Pastor Jeff in the youth ministry here. Um, and I almost said no to him, just like that. And here's why. It's because, A, we had just purchased a house in February. Um, our son was, had just been born. We lived just a few blocks away from uh, my wife's parents and her family. She, you know, still had a sister in school at that time. Um, life at the church was good. You know, we had just built a building. There wasn't any, like, major, like, I'm looking for a way out type of thing. Nothing. And um, so I did what I, I had been taught to do. I just said, let me pray about this. And I was a little apprehensive, you know, because my wife is one month past having a baby. And, um, you know, never know sometimes what emotion can be on that day. And so um, I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do. Um, and so I just simply presented the facts to her. I said, here's what happened. Pastor Weaver called me and offered, you know, for us to come down and work at New Hope. And we, I think we need to pray about it. And so for about a week, I think, we didn't really talk about it. But just individually, we we're praying about it. And that week, you know, I was sensing in my heart, like, I think this is what we need to do. It didn't make sense, you know. Um, sh- I didn't want to just say yes because this is my home church that I'd been a part of since 1991. Uh, you know, I definitely didn't want that because, you know, I knew that stigma could have been there. Um, and so I just really wanted to hear from God. And so uh, we came back about a week later. M- remind you, you know, I'm sensing in my spirit this is what we need to do. Um, but I had her go first. <laughs> I was the nice husband. I said, uh, why don't you go first? I, I'm pretty sure. And, and Jamie said um, that she said, I think we need to go. And, um, you know, that was a confirmation in my heart. And I said, why? Well, I'm thinking so too. And it, you know, at the time we didn't understand necessarily, but, you know, now the, the big picture, you know, we've seen a lot of reasons why God needed us uh, to be back here. And so, God uses other people to help make decisions as well, you know. Um, and so this is a huge component, a huge strength, especially for the, those of us who are married, um, that we can bounce thoughts and perspectives and ideas off our spouse. Um, this is a huge component and reason why when God says to, to not be unequally yoked, because when you, when you have a spouse that is in tune with the Holy Spirit, they're listening, they're in tune, and they want to do what God's will is as well. And so, um, just a couple practical things. <clears throat> um, Pastor Austin, if you could come. But I, I want to share just this final, just tidbit of information. In my life, I've noticed that when it's God leading, when God is, is calling m- me to do something, and you may be able to agree with this because you've sensed in your spirit too, when God is, is leading me to do something, His voice, His his plan, it remains. 
God, God's plan is constant. It's hard to ignore. When my plan, my ideas, the things that I want to do begin to fall away, God, I, I've, I've recognized, I've noticed that God's plan it doesn't deviate, does it? How many of you else have noticed that before? It's just, it's just that deep spirit, you know, that deep voice within you just saying, man, for some reason, this is constant. And so I've shared a few ideas, a few, a few examples of bigger decisions, but I've even had it, you know, happen, and this isn't every decision, but even just a few weeks ago on a Sunday night, my family and I, we're doing the all, all um, too familiar what are we going to eat tonight after church thing, you know, and my kids were asking for this, and my wife and I wanted to do this, and um, I just sensed in my spirit, this seems silly, but I sensed like, let's, let's just grab some food at high V, you know, some bread and some sandwich meat and things like that, and then we'll go home and we'll just make like grilled cheese sandwiches or something like that. Um, so we went, and we were there, and we ran into David Mahirwe from church, um, who had just returned from Congo and had been ministering to his village, his hometown, and he had bought a lot of people like um, uh, mattresses and food and that kind of stuff. And our family, we were able to bless him and to give him money so he could do that. And so it seems like so little, but I was just sensed in my heart like, hey, let's just go to High V and do this. And so um, God is concerned about the big things and the little things in our life. And so, yes, we're, we're not going to like tell you what you need to do in your life. Okay, that's not the plan of tonight. The goal isn't to like spell out your entire life here. Um, but the, the thought is, is, is if we can align ourselves up in proximity, we can be in a close relationship with Christ. We're going to begin to recognize his voice. And when we recognize his voice, he's going to begin to speak to us. And we need to be in, in obedience. We need to take a step of faith. We can apply some practical rules of life and wisdom here, but, but we also need to take a step of faith. And so here's what we're going to do, how we're going to end tonight, is, um, is just by simply, Austin, Pastor Austin is going to play for a little bit and we'll close in a song, but um, two questions for you tonight is this, is are you drawing near to God? Just like, the scripture says, are you drawing near to God? Are you in proximity to hear his voice? And the second one is this, is are you keeping in step with the Holy Spirit? When he's leading, are you leading? Don't look for the cloud formation tomorrow morning to lead you, you know, should you go to work or should you go to this place or that place? You know, just as we align ourselves up with, with God and his word and relationship, he's gonna begin to lead and guide us. So are you drawing near to God? In, the, in order to hear his voice. And the second one is this. Are you keeping in step with the Holy Spirit? So here's what I encourage you to do. You can find a place here at the altar. You can stay where you're at. You can stand. You can be seated. Um, but as we take a few moments just to pray and be in God's presence, um, think about those questions and pray and ask God. Some of you are facing big decisions. And uh, I, I know God has a plan and he, he wants to go through this with you. So God... Um, we take these next few moments and we rest and we trust in you and your presence. Lord, we, we draw near to you. There's things that you're asking us to do. May we step in obedience. I pray that those who are having bigger decisions to make in life, that you would confirm it you would give wisdom but there would that be that step of faith they also take so God would you not just in this moment but this entire week speak to us before we close out uh, tonight is there anybody here that would say I'm, I'm facing some decisions I need to make in life and I really want to follow God's plan for my life anybody would say that hands went up. Would you um, join me as we pray for these individuals? We've all been in spots in our life where we need to make decisions and it can be a little intimidating, right? It can be a little uh, nerve-wracking at times. But we know that, that God has your best interest in mind. 
And so lean into God, those of you who, who responded. Lean in and, and really uh, take time to draw close to God. You know, draw close to God because of who he is, not because of necessarily he's going to tell you what to do next, if that makes sense. Lean into God. He, he's, he's your father. He has the best for you. And so we're going to pray for those who are in those, that situation tonight or a spot. And just um, pray that God would speak to you. Um, and then once that's done, you're free to stay and continue to pray. I encourage you to do so. But you understand that some people need to go. So, Father, we lift up those who are in a spot where they need to make some decisions. And I pray, God, that, that you would lead them in your path. Lead them in your will and your desire for their life. The plan that you have for them, God, speak to them as they lean into you, as they draw close to you. God, may, may they see more of you than ever before. Realize your character, your heart is love. And your heart is a, is, a, is a good heart. You have a good plan for them. So pray that you would give wisdom in decisions that need to be made. May there be obedience. May there be faith. God, confirm. God, have your way. We thank you that you are so faithful to us. Lord, I pray a blessing upon every person here that this week would be an amazing week where we are in step with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray a blessing upon this church, Lord, that we will continue to strive to know you. We would never settle to just be a building, to show up for service. God, we would never settle for anything, but we would strive to know you more, to make you known to the people in our community. God, continue to fan into flame your spirit, your gifts, your Holy Spirit here. Thank you, Jesus. In your wonderful name we pray. Feel free to stay and pray if you want. I encourage you to continue to lean into God. Have a great week.